Hello once again. Welcome to the final system screencast of the unit. The final system we're going to look at is the nervous system. Probably the most complex and intricate system of the entire bunch. So what is the nervous system? Well, the nervous system is basically a signal receiving and sending and interpreting system. This is a system that receives information about what is happening inside and outside the body and directs the way that we need to respond or the way your body needs to react in various situations. It controls everything happening inside and outside the body. Okay? The thing that controls or sends the signals is something called a neuron. And so the basic job of a neuron is to carry information throughout your nervous system. And these uh, transmit electrical signals or Im impulses throughout the entire body. And what's kind of cool about these impulses is they don't travel just like a string along a, a, a line there. They actually hop. Okay, and we'll talk more about that hopping in a little bit. But because they're hopping and not moving uh, in a straight line, it allows them to move at approximately 400 kilometers an hour. That's how fast your electrical signal moves. Incredibly fast. Your nervous system is divided into two uh, nervous systems, so to speak. So you have what's called your central nervous system, which includes the brain, the spinal cord, and you can even say the optic nerves, and then something called your peripheral nervous system, which is all the nerves in the rest of the body. Okay? So starting with this, the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, this is the part of the nervous system that receives and interprets all the sensory information and then coordinates the activities. So it's bringing in all the information, it's sending it to the brain, and it's coordinating what the next step would be. Your peripheral nervous system has a job of connecting the central nervous system to the limbs and to the organs and to every single point in your body. So from the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord, all your, neuro all your nerves and neurons extend outwards and allow for your system to detect or sense signals. Those, that's the peripheral nervous system. Central is the center, peripheral, everything on the outside. Now, within your peripheral nervous system, so we're going to divide it a little further here, there are two types of neurons. Okay? There's something called a sensory neuron and a motor neuron. A sensory neuron carries information from the body to the brain. It senses what's going on. Motor neurons carry information from the brain to the muscles and to the organs. It creates a response. So, you know, you hear the phone ring, your ear picks up the signal, a whole bunch of uh, information is passed into the auditory canal and that whole hearing process happens. The signal gets trans, uh, the hearing uh, gets trans transmitted or transferred into a electrical signal. The neurons, sensory neurons, carry information to the brain. The brain says, the phone's ringing, sends a signal down to the arm or to the uh, motor neurons, connecting to the arm and say, pick up the phone or to the legs to say, go get the phone, and then you answer it. Okay? And that's just very generic on how it happens. And that happens so fast, so fast. Uh, your peripheral nervous system, again, stick sticking with that one, has two types of responses. There's something called a somatic response and something called an autonomic response. This is a really good summary on somatic responses. Okay. First of all, love Steve Carell. Okay. Somatic responses are what you can decide on and what you choose to happen. So, for example, when you hear a loud noise, you turn your head. Somatic responses are voluntary, which means you control or you think about these responses. Okay. Somatic, you control. They're voluntary. Autonomic, great summary of the autonomic. Your heartbeat. Okay. These are uh, um, responses that you don't even think about, such as dilating your pupils or your heartbeat, ones that your body controls involuntarily. You don't think about them. If you had to think about dilating your pupils or pumping your heart every second of every day, we wouldn't do anything but lay in a bed. Okay? So autonomic, you don't think about. They're involuntary. They happen by themselves. Okay? Now, in some situations, the sensory and the motor neurons, they work without involving the brain. And what these are, are these are reflexes, and they help to protect the body by making exceptionally fast decisions. So a reflex is actually an autonomic response by the nervous system to a stimulus. Your brain is not actually connected to a nerve or to a reflex. It is sent to the spinal cord at most, and the 
body makes a split decision to say move the hand off the burner and you do it that's why you know for example if you touch something hot your hand is off the burner before you say the words ow that's a reflex so so far what do we need to know here well we need to know the brain is divided into two systems the central and the peripheral nervous system you need to know what the central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord you should have a general idea on the parts of the neuron, but we're not going to go into too much of that detail here, so you can kind of skip over that one. You need to know the difference between sensory neurons and motor neurons. You need to know the difference between autonomic and somatic responses. And you, need, you need to know what a reflex is, that it doesn't involve the brain whatsoever. Okay? Okay. Neurological illnesses. Well, there are a few. There are many, actually, but let's focus on just a few. Alzheimer's disease. As you can see in the photo there, Alzheimer's disease is the degradation of the gray matter in the brain. Okay, And this disease causes problems with memory, thinking, and behavior. Because it's just the brain is literally losing mass and therefore it can't store any of this stuff. Parkinson's disease is another one. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative disorder from the central nervous system that affects motor skills, thinking processes, and other functions. There's a famous video called uh, Awakenings. <laughs> I forgot it for a second there, Awakenings. And it's a fascinating story about a true a true story about a doctor trying to treat Parkinson's. Uh, a Parkinson's is characterized by people who have these uncontrollable shakes or movements. Uh, they have tics that don't seem to go away, lots of head swaying, uh, tremors, uh, and things that they they seem to not be able to control. And it's true, they really can't control. It's a degenerative disorder of the central nervous system. Last one I want to mention here is multiple sclerosis or MS. This disease is a disease in which the body's own immune system actually attacks and damages the neurons causing the axons or the longer parts that are coated with a special coating to no longer send signals. So when we talked about an axon in the beginning here, we talked about how the signal runs really quickly through the body. MS actually takes away these structures here. Okay, These are called myelin sheath. And when they disappear, the message no longer hops, it tries to travel, and it severely slows or, or disconnects the signal. And that's what uh, MS essentially uh, leads to in, in most cases. Okay, So there's a quick rundown of the uh, nervous system. We're going to go through a little bit more in class. Uh, any questions, as always, bring them to class, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the screencast.